So with the help of two different YouTube creators, we're gonna run through 10 different DIY projects you can do at home while you've got all this time off from work. This will keep you busy, this will keep your mind occupied. Welcome back to Northern Exotics. On this YouTube channel, we talk all things reptile related, whether it be specific species care, breeds your own live food, amazing little reptile hacks. We give you everything with the most up-to-date knowledge on this channel. If that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. So the first thing we're gonna get onto in this video is these little enclosures. You can make these little enclosures out of simple jar sweep things, just like this. It's dead easy. The way I did it, there's no animal actually in this. This is built up and prepared, ready for my morning gecko eggs to hatch. But the way I've done it is I drilled a big hole in the top, just like this. And then I got like a tent mesh that I bought on eBay. It was only £2.50 for a massive metre by metre split of it. And I just hot glue gunned it into the lid, just like that. I added a bioactive substrate Ideally, I could do with redoing this and putting a drainage layer in there because I have struggled with having it too wet in there. And I put a live pothos plant in there and that just absolutely suits perfect for baby crested geckos, baby Madagascan giant day geckos, baby morning geckos, which is what I'm going to be using it for. It's absolutely amazing. While it's set up like this, the plant's maturing, the, the roots are setting into the substrate, it's working really, really well. I've got a clean-up crew in there. I've got a clean-up crew of giant orange um, tropical isopods, I've got uh, tropical grey isopods, I've got some springtails in there, and they're just maturing slowly, waiting for the arrival of the actual gecko in there. If you want to see a video on how these are actually made, I personally got inspired by my idol, Clint's Reptiles. I'll pin his video just up there if you want to go and check it out. But while we've got this, we'll go on to the second one, which is just a dead quick one, these little feeding ledges. I have got a little feeding ledge in there that I made myself. Now it's just a piece of styrofoam. If you've got a baby crested gecko, morning geckos, Madagascan giant day geckos, anything like that, any sort of arboreal lizard that feeds out of these little feeding dishes that are on the side of the enclosures, it's well worth making one, just because of the fun aspect behind it. It's probably not gonna look as good as anybody else's, but you can get the kids involved in this as well and really have some fun with it. The way I made this one was simply a piece of styrofoam. In the UK, we call it polystyrene, so you may hear me say that word a few times. Now, if you've got a bigger species, you can layer the polystyrene on top of each other, make it quite thick, quite bulky, and all that sort of stuff. If you're making it quite big and bulky, just make sure you've got the surface there to sustain it so it doesn't fall off when you do attach it to the side of the enclosure. But for this, this is baby morning geckos, just one layer, perfectly fine. There's a tattoo ink cup in the top of it. That's what I put the food in there. And it was simply made just by chipping away at the sides and then I got a lighter and I ran the lighter all around it, made it look a bit more rocky, made it so the polystyrene wasn't tiny little balls. It was all sealed in nicely so the balls wouldn't fall off anywhere. Then I painted it. Top tip, use acrylic paint because it's non-toxic and it's water resistant. So when I'm misting this down throughout the life of these geckos, that's going to be perfectly fine throughout their entire life. If you want to see a video on how I made that more in detail and anything like that, just click on that video just up there. If you guys do any sort of crafty DIY stuff for your reptiles, stick it in the comment section down below. I'd love to see what you guys get up to. Plus, all those people watching can go down and have a look as well. While you're all down there, hit the thumbs up button because it really does help this video out massively. Let's get on. Hey guys, my name's Dakota, the owner of DBCB Exotics, and if you're looking for a fun DIY activity to do, building a bioactive enclosure can definitely be a great choice. Can you tell the viewers a little bit more about that? Creating a bioactive vivarium is definitely a fun and exciting experience. I mean, you're turning a drabble tank in it with some fake plants and cork bark into its own living ecosystem like this redded tree frog enclosure behind me. You know what, I certainly agree. There's definitely... I can't think of a single downside to building a bioactive vivarium. They're just so amazing, but why? Now there are definitely a lot of pros when you decide to go bioactive. Tired of cleaning reptile poop? Well that's going to be a thing of the past when you have an established cleanup crew. For those who don't know what a cleanup crew is, well they're the microorganisms, the isopods, the springtails, the micro fungi that's actually within the substrate of the enclosure. They eat all the animal's waste, all the rotten leaves, the rotten wood, and they turn it into feces. That then fertilizes the plants, fertilizes the substrate, helps with plant growth, along with the plant growth, you can add stuff like the reptile systems, new dawn LEDs, all that sort of stuff, just to help the plant growth. The plant growth really helped with the humidity as well, but why? 
Maybe you have one of those higher humidity species, like some of the New Caledonian geckos and frogs, and you're having some trouble keeping that humidity up because you might live somewhere like me, which the average humidity is about 30% in my house. Well, those live plants are definitely gonna give you that humidity pump and actually keep the humidity stable. Thanks for that, but what is the biggest pro of all of going bioactive? I mean, just look at it. You have a slice of jungle in its own little ecosystem inside of a glass box. This enclosure is definitely the highlight of my reptile room, which is the obvious choice why I decided to make it into my backdrop. Can you tell the viewers what are the main things you need to go bioactive? You're going to need two main things when you decide to build a bioactive enclosure. The one, obviously, is going to be, you know, live plants, a cleanup crew, some of the supplies you're going to need, but then also the knowledge behind what bioactive really is. As far as the supplies, though, you can get everything you need on online reptile stores, such as Josh's Frogs. I really like that site just because of the fact that they actually have kits specified for each different species. It makes it just easier for someone just starting out. And I'll definitely second that. Josh's Frogs are an amazing site. They've got a great website. They've got a great YouTube channel. Go over and check them out. They've got all the stuff, dart frog related, bioactive related anything you could possibly want however if you're in the UK you can't get Josh's frogs over here the place I recommend highly is bioactive herbs they've got a great website it's linked in the description down below along with Josh's frogs Lastly, you're going to want the knowledge behind really what a bioactive terrarium is. Now, when you're first starting out, there are some things you can do to mess it up that really just crashes the ecosystem and makes it not thrive. So I really suggest doing your proper research before going ahead and jumping into the bioactive vivariums. If people want to learn more about bioactive vivariums, terrariums, terrariums, all that sort of stuff, have you got any advice for anyone? Now, if you guys are interested in learning more, I do have two videos out on my channel about bioactive terrariums. One is actually a step-by-step -step guide on how to build your basic setup, and then one goes more into the concept and of the research Search around bioactive vivariums. You can find both those videos on my channel, DBCB Exotics, or I'm sure there'll be some cards up somewhere above my head while I'm, we're making this video. And that's gonna wrap it up, guys. I hope this gave you a fun little DIY project to do while you're at the house. And you know, hopefully we see some new bioactive enclosures out there very soon. Whoa, 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 before you go, mate, before you go, have you got any more sorts of DIY projects that people could do? Any more advice or anything like that? Well, building a custom background can definitely be a great choice. Yeah, that's a really good one, actually, because you can build backgrounds for arid species, desert species, tropical species. There's loads of ways of doing it. Let's go into that one a bit more detail. Making a custom background really brings that enclosure to the next level. I mean, you're taking this, you know, bare see-through glass or wood, PVC, whatever the enclosure is, and turning it into just this cool backdrop that your animals can actually utilize. Are there any personal tips or anything that you do to yours different to everybody else? Personally, for my backgrounds, I like to include some cork flats, or even create some ledges that my animals can climb on, and then also create some spots that I can actually hang plants down. Now, creating a custom enclosure is really easy, and you really don't need that many things. Essentially, just an enclosure, some great stuff foam, and then some sort of sealant. Of course, there's a multitude of extras you can also add, you know, like live plants or some ledges like cork flat or the custom backgrounds that I've made personally. And the really cool part about it is you can get really creative with it. Have something like a New Caledonian gecko or frog that you want to give more of a jungly type background. Well, using some mold-free silicone like the GE1 and then pressing some cocoa fiber on it really gives it that nice jungle look. Or maybe you have something more arid, say like a bearded dragon. You want something more stony and rocky looking, then some dry luck would definitely be a great choice. Or you could get real creative and implement both pieces making a custom mixed background. I mean, we're just getting crazy now. But to wrap things up, making a custom background. It can be a fun, easy thing to do that really makes your enclosure stand out from the average setup. If you guys are interested in learning more about how to make a background, I will be making a video step-by-step -step on how I personally make mine on my channel, DBCB Exotic. So if you are interested, definitely check it out. Hey guys, I'm Professor Herp, and I'll be talking about my DIY enclosures. Here's one of my AccuMonitor ones that I built. Uh, this was roughly about $500 if you don't screw up like I did. Um, so it should be very comparable to commercial builds that you would buy. It's really not that hard to put together. I got all my supplies from a local Lowe's uh, store, which is just a hardware store if you're outside the U.S. Uh, this is just all plywood right here. Uh, now, in plywood, there is some material, there is some wood that is not necessarily good for reptiles, but when it gets compressed, that shouldn't be of issue anymore. If you want to be extra safe though, you could probably use maple wood. It's going to be a little bit more cost-wise, but maple is completely safe for reptiles. I never had any problem with plywood though, uh, but this right here, this is a, a six by two and a half by four foot enclosure. It has about two feet of substrate in it, and it's holding pretty good down here. Uh, so the pressure is contained. We can take a look on the inside of it though. Now while Ackies don't need high air humidity, they do need some good damp substrate. 
Uh, so I did coat this with a water-based polyurethane, which is completely safe, and it's holed up well for about, I guess, two years now. Um, so really good with that. I also put some plexiglass uh, on the lower two feet where the substrate is to keep it off the wall, which helps as well to prevent wood damage from the water. Uh, so that works good. You necessarily don't need to do this. Uh, it is a little bit more of a cost, but I find it uh, somewhat more of a safeguard. Now the outside, putting it together, the best tip I can give is make sure to do your measurements correctly. Uh, a couple of my screw ups were just incorrect measurements. So really make sure you plan ahead before you go get the plywood cut or you cut it yourself. Um, the only additional thing, I mean, I did, you know, screw in some screws here to put it together. Uh, I kind of just went off of what I was feeling. There is some sealant on the inside. Um, but the only other additional thing other than this just being a giant box is just some holes here that I drooped uh, some fixtures in for the halogen of floodlights I have in there. Uh, and that was pretty simple. I have a detailed written guide for putting this exact unit together and uh, hopefully this could be left in the description for you guys to check out. Lastly, I'll just mention the doors. These are just plexiglass pieces uh, that were cut and then I drilled some holes in this to put in the handles. The tracks here, I forget exactly what they're called. I mean, they are not built or made exactly for this, uh, but that is in the written guide for building this thing. Uh, all the links you'll need is in there. And yeah, I can really vouch for that. Building your own enclosures is a massively fun project, but I had the same problems I mismeasured when I built Diego's enclosure down there. Another good benefit about building your own enclosures is, especially for me, I like to stack vivariums on top of each other, as you can tell. Well, I had to add a strengthening beam in the middle there. I could do that because it was a custom enclosure. It just helps strengthen everything on the bottom level so the top is more secure. So, Professor Herb, have you got anything else? Another project you could be doing is DIY decor. Right here, I have Dell's enclosure, um, which Asus is in as well. He was the one climbing up me. Uh, and in here, most of the wood is collected from the outside. Oh, now this really is a great topic because I personally collect loads of wood myself from outside. I use it in all of my enclosures. It adds a massive enrichment for your animals. A lot of people spend way too much money on wood at expos and stuff. There's a big cost to wood for some reason in the hobby. And I got most of this wood uh, just collecting it from a safe spot outdoors. I have a few videos on decorating uh, my Aki enclosures and collecting outdoor wood uh, that you can maybe check out on my channel. But they are pretty much semi-boreal, my Aki monitors, so they like a built-up place. It's right under the UVB for UVB basking. And this is just a good, cheap way to utilize wood uh, in your enclosures and not have to break the bank. This is Asus's enclosure. I wanted to show this one off because this has a lot more outdoor wood than Dell's. The only piece that uh, I, I got previously is that one, um, I believe, and, and that one over there. But this is all pretty much outdoor wood I collected that's been in here for well over a year. It's safe. Uh, you don't need to super sanitize it with bleach or putting it in an oven. Just a good wash down and sit in the sun and you are golden. Uh, but it's really cool for reptiles that want to do some climbing and stuff. It's really fun to see how they interact with this environment. Um, and like I said, you don't have to break the bank. If you want to see more on how I went about collecting this wood in the outdoors in a safe manner and then putting it in the enclosure in a safe way without using any harmful chemicals or anything and my argument for all that, check the top right. That will have my first ever video, so be kind, uh, on YouTube where I proposed sort of that argument and Asus wants to jump on the enclosure. Now that really was highly insightful because that is exactly how I clean all of my wood as well. I mean, I've got all of my callus versicolors, my boa constrictor, even my bearded dragon has got a cracking piece of wood in there. My savannah monitor's got some, my uh, Carl Sunglow boa constrictor's got some. It really does help. And you don't need to over sanitize it if you've collected it from an extremely clean place. Let's go on to number seven, the seventh project that you could do. Now this one is just a rock hide. I'm gonna be using this in my leopard gecko's bioactive enclosure. I'm currently building that enclosure up it's i'm doing it step by step as and when lockdown comes available we can go back out and stuff like that i go and get the polystyrene and stuff to make the custom background before i can actually go one step further with it so if you want to see that make sure you do hit the subscribe button but this was made simply with rock slates just loads of bits of slate i went on a drive with my partner all around the welsh countryside now wales is famous for its welsh slate mines and they're all closed down but the hills are just full of 
slate just waiting to be grabbed. So I grabbed a few bits. I actually went there for a drive, a nice romantic day out and all this sort of stuff. And I came back with half a boot full of slate. Hugo's got some in his enclosure. Diego's got some in his enclosure. The rest of it I've saved up and used to make this hide. I made this basically by using the slate, quite fancy actually. I just used it with hot glue gun and glued all the little aspects together. But I wanted to be able to make it where I could take the top off if I needed to get in and get the gecko out. So I've had to be dead crafty. And basically I explain it all in one of my videos that I have just done. And I've done a full video on how to build this and how I built it and all the benefits that I've added within this. If you wanna see that video, just click on that card just up there. That'll take you through everything. Number eight, now we're coming towards the end, but this one's quite popular actually. Breed your own live food. For me personally, I breed my own superworms, I breed my own mealworms, I breed my own doobia roaches. It's dead easy. It's free live food. You don't know if we're gonna go back into lockdown and the next lockdown, are they gonna close all the reptile shops or all the online suppliers, are the posts gonna stop? It's highly beneficial to breed your own live food. Not only to help yourself out and to reassure that your animals are always gonna have food, but it's a project you can do with your kids as well. It's amazing. Breeding your own dubia roaches has been my most successful one and been my easiest one. It's very easy to set up. It's just a simple dark container. I've added quite a bit of ventilation into the sides of it with using that tent mesh that I mentioned earlier and egg crates inside it. I have got a heat mat under one side of it. I'm using the reptile systems heating mat just simply because it's the most technologically advanced as you can tell by that on the back. You've got your hot spot in the middle and then it slowly fades out into a cooler temperature. So that's been absolutely perfect for me heating up my Doobia Roach colony. And it's just amazing to see them grow, to see them give birth. And there's loads of ways you can do it. I've done thousands of videos, not so much thousands. I've probably done 10, I've probably done about 30 videos to do with breeding doobia roaches. So if you want to see that, I'll stick a playlist just there. I'll get quickly now on to number nine. We're coming towards the end of this list now. Why not try and grow your own plants to eventually install into your enclosures? I'm building this big Repti Breeze enclosure just here but the, I can't afford the big plants and all this sort of stuff. So I'm currently growing my own plants with the help of the guys at Reptile Systems. They're giving me loads of help, loads of advice. They're giving me the correct lighting and stuff like that. I'm using the New Dawn LED lights, which are absolutely amazing, full spectrum light to help with the plant growth. I've currently got, I don't even know the names of all these plants, but I've got all of these plants available for that enclosure currently growing and they're absolutely thriving they're doing really well and the knowledge i've learned through doing the research as well has been absolutely amazing i'm also growing a load of arid plants ready for my bioactive leopard gecko enclosure the problem i currently have is i kind of think they might be a little bit too big for the leopard gecko enclosure now they're going to climb all over it and fall off i'm I don't know. I, I bought these really small, not so long ago. And under the New Dawn LED lights, they've just blown up to these massive plants now. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, whether to just keep them as plants around the house or whether to actually install them into the enclosure. I don't quite know. Again, make sure you subscribe to see that leopard gecko build. I might use them, I might not. But let's go on to the last one, number 10. Make your own little coconut hides. They're dead cool to make, dead easy, so satisfying. You've got so many ways you can do it as well. For me, I just basically drilled a hole in one side to empty all the water out. It didn't all empty out, so I drilled one in the other side, let the air in as the water come out. It was amazing. Then I just got a saw, and I just went straight down the middle with a saw, split it in half. Then I drilled a hole and then drilled down to make the little entrance into the actual coconut hide. And, but I was left with all the coconut. Now you can either get a knife and cut all that coconut out, which only takes a few seconds. You can eat the coconut and stuff. I personally don't like it to go to waste. So with the hole that I made in the top, I put a piece of string, tied a knot on the inside and I hung it outside overnight. And the birds and the squirrels and stuff just started chipping away and eating at it. But it took two days and I ended up with this perfect coconut hide and it was fun to watch it was a fun activity to do with my son and now i have a couple of coconut hides and it cost me 60p for the coconut bonus these are going to go in with my leopard geckos they're going to go in with all the babies that i've got breeding this year it's just going to be absolutely fun so thanks for tuning in guys i really appreciate each and every one of you oh my god we're over 7,000 subscribers now that's amazing there's still 79 percent of you guys that haven't subscribed so if you're one of them i'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe while you're down there stick it in the comment section if you guys do anything like this any sort of diy activities i'd love to see all your sort of responses to see what you guys get up to if it's something that i've never done i'd be asking you some questions on that sort of stuff go over and check the other guys out as well because they do some amazing work on their channels 
And massive thanks to them, massive props for helping me out with this video. I appreciate you massively. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you want to see some more videos, go and check these out.